Hello everybody, my name is Dr. P and I am an oral surgery resident at a six year program and I'm here to answer some common questions that I get from dental students about oral surgery externships. So let's get started. So in this talk, we'll talk about what is an externship, how and when to apply, the preparation that goes into it, what to bring and how to be a great extern. Now the views expressed here today are my own and not of my residency program or anyone else for that matter. So to start out with, like what is an externship? So essentially an externship is an opportunity for you to go to a residency program and to observe firsthand the residents and attending surgeons. It's for you to get exposure to the field of oral surgery, to see if this is something that you can commit your life to and to determine if the residency program is a good fit for you. Likewise, externships are more or less required for application into oral surgery residency programs at this time. Um, this is a very physically and mentally demanding residency, and you want to be sure that this is something that you are 100% committed to prior to applying. So how many weeks of externships should you do? It's a very highly debated um, topic. Um, a quick literature search yielded this uh, recent paper um, basically saying that in a recent survey, oral surgery residents reported an average of five weeks of externships completed prior to residency. Completion of an externship at their match program was observed in 42% of respondents. So for me personally, I did three weeks of externships and I matched to my number one program and it was not a program that I externed at. So how and when do you apply to externships? So this is my timeline. I think it worked out fairly well. Basically, I suggest that the summer between your second and third year, if you haven't already, you should research programs, and these are programs that you are interested in attending as a potential resident, and make a list of five to 10 programs that you would love to visit, uh, because some of those programs will be booked out on the days that you are available. So it's good to have backup options. Um, for me, I applied for the externships in September of my third year, and you wanna apply as early as possible, just so that you can book these dates and not have to worry about them being filled up. Um, most programs take a couple of externs per week, so there are definitely many slots available, but they can also fill up quite quickly. And spring of D3 year is when I completed my externships, and in May was when the application for oral surgery opened up, and I was already completed with my externships at that time. So a common question that I get is, what if I don't have designated externship time off? Um, so this is something that is unfair because some dental students get a lot of externship time or they have summer breaks or whatever, and others do not. And so it's really hard to find the time to go to a program. And I found myself in this situation a little bit because I had used up my time that was uh, four externships, it was grouped to this other, um, I don't remember if it was personal time off or something of that nature. And so I used up most of my time in my second year when I was shadowing different professionals and different specialties to see if I should be a general dentist or if I should specialize. So what I recommend is use your school holidays or spring, fall, summer break, whatever you have. For me, I ended up using my one week of spring break, which I believe was in March of D3 year, and then my one week of summer break, which was in May of D3 year, right before the application opened. And then I believe there were some days that we got off around Memorial Day, and I used a couple of sick days and got one more week out of it. So one common misconception that I had and other students may have is, you know, about the summer between D3 and D4 year, the application has opened. Is it worth doing an externship at that time? And I would absolutely say yes. Um, I thought that I had to have all my externships done prior to applying. And of course that would be ideal, but what you can do is you can still list on your application a future externship and then just make sure if you're asked at an interview later on that you say, yes, I indeed went to this 
externship and you can update your CV accordingly. And I think the summer might be a good option because you're fresh on their mind prior to them sending out invitations for interviews. So summer can also be a good time to go. I would caution you against going in July. Um, and this is a personal opinion I have. The reason I say that is because in July, essentially you have brand new chiefs, the experienced chiefs have left the, pro the program in June. Um, your interns are brand new, so recent graduates from dental school that don't know anything about residency. And of course, the calendar in July is packed because of orthognathic surgeries and things like that. And so the program itself is usually stressed at that time. So adding an extern to the mix can be a little more stressful for the program. So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, needless to say, we still have externs in July. So how do you apply for an externship? So I would say if you have no idea what opportunities exist or what programs there are, if you're starting from scratch, a good place to go is Amos under Education and Research and their externship opportunities. There's a link that basically details all the different externships out there and what you are expected to do and how you apply. And then, of course, it gives the website of different um, programs. And, of course, go to their website and read about what it is that you need to do in order to apply. So common things needed to apply. I did a quick search of about 15 programs on their websites to see what it is that they are looking for in an application. And this list um, might not include certain things. And this list also is very um, long and broad. So not every program is going to need all of these things. So just keep in mind and make sure you go to their website to get the most accurate information. So. Almost everybody is gonna ask for your CV. A lot of them wanna see your dental school transcripts. Some of them will ask for undergraduate transcripts. Almost all of them will require some sort of letter of recommendation. Usually it's just one letter and that's usually from the OMFS department chair. Some do not specify. A photograph, CBSC score if it's available, um, a personal statement a letter of good standing from your school, a statement of interest in the program, and dental board scores if available. And then of course you have to list at some point what dates you would like to come. And typically you have to list uh, several dates that they can choose from. So these are some pearls that I came up with on selecting an externship. Um, so the first one is very relevant to myself. Um, basically, the length of externship listed is not always accurate. So if a program says, for example, you need to be there between two and three weeks, but you only have one, I would highly recommend that you get in contact with that program. I was interested in a program, but only had one week. And so I never applied thinking that they wouldn't pick me anyway. And Fast forward to the fall when I had my interviews at this program, they asked why I did an extern there. And I had told them that I only had a week, but their website says two to three. And they told me that their website was long outdated and that is no longer a requirement. So by all means, contact the program if you're really interested and you think you cannot meet the time commitment to see if that is indeed um, the case. So most externships require you to be a D3 or sometimes a D4 student. Some do not specify, so it's always good to confirm before you commit and book your plane tickets that you do, in fact, qualify for the externship. Um, so that is something that I would mention in your application. Most of the application ask outright, but some do not. So make sure you make it very clear what year of student you are. So something to remember is externships can help you. You saw that statistic earlier that 40 something percent of people match to a program that they externed at. But remember that externships can also hurt you because you're there for several days at a time and it's hard to keep your guard up all the time. And ultimately it may not go as planned. Um, some programs allow you to stay in the resident call room, um, and this tip is just for 
students that are unsure of you know what exact program they want to go to maybe you have many options and you're not sure you would love to go to all of them but can't that's something to consider is the financial aspect and it's super nice to stay in the resident call room and i got to do that on my externships which was awesome um, and then some residents also allow you to stay with them so if you're looking to programs and you see that somebody one of the residents at the program was an alumni at your dental school i think it's worth uh, sending them a message if you do extern there to see if they can accommodate you or if they know of accommodations in the area and the next point is really important and that is to try to spread your externships out geographically because besides externing at a certain program what programs look at is where you did your externships and really what matters is that they are spread around the country uh, for example, if you externed at, you know, five places that are all along the East Coast and suddenly you're applying to a school in the Midwest, the Midwest school will look at your externship list and think to themselves, why on earth is this person going to want to come out here because it is so obvious that they want to stay on the East Coast. And believe me, they really do look at this. Also, try to apply to a diversity of programs based on scope. So you may know that, let's say, you really want to go into head and neck. But I would urge you to explore different aspects of the field so that you are familiar with what oral surgery has to offer. Because let's say you do not like, let's say, cosmetics at all, but then you match to a program that does a lot of cosmetics and you may not think it's the best fit in the long run um, so it's always good to explore the field and see what is out there so that you are more prepared uh, to make the best uh, rank list when the time comes and then obviously consider travel costs during different times of the year especially if you're traveling during holidays um, certain cities are going to be more expensive, so try to time it correctly so that you go to the bigger cities, let's say when it's colder, when there are fewer people out um, traveling, and hopefully you save some money on the externship trail. And I would also say don't discount the hands-off programs. You know, everybody wants to go to a program where they get to do things and be involved. That is really awesome, and that's great if you can secure those externships. But do realize there are plenty of programs that are super awesome that are hands off programs and it has nothing to do with the program itself. It's usually an institutional policy and essentially their hands are tied and unfortunately they cannot allow you to do things. So don't discount those programs. I think it's still worth it to go in my opinion. And then lastly, also an important point, you want to save the best for last. So if you have a program in mind that you want to go to this is your number one program and you get an externship offer from them you definitely want to go there last so that you can learn how to be a good extern and you're familiar with oral surgery and the workings of a hospital the workings of an or before you go to that program so externship preparation so my number one tip is to study anatomy. And when you study anatomy, you want to study anatomy like a surgeon. So for example, in dental school, I did really well in anatomy and I thought I knew everything. And how I studied anatomy was like, okay, let me focus on the face today. Then I looked at all the facial muscles. Then I looked at all the bones of the skull. Then I looked at vasculature. And that's how I studied anatomy, thought I knew everything. Turns out I was wrong. So the way I study anatomy now as a resident is, okay, let's say I'm going to make some incision overlying some aspect of the face. What are the layers I'm going to go through? Is the facial nerve going to be above the muscle? Is it going to be below the muscle? What about the vasculature? Is it going to be above the muscle, below the muscle? How far away am I going to be from the different branches of the facial nerve or the trunk, whatever. And so that is how you study anatomy like a surgeon. And then the next tip is to study pathology. So the questions that I were at, was asked on my externships were all related to either anatomy or oral pathology. And the questions that I hear my attendings or my senior residents asking of our externs are all related to anatomy or 
pathology. So those are my number two, the uh, two biggest tips for highest yield when it comes to externship preparation. Um, lastly, if it's your uh, first externship, you definitely want to view some videos online about OR attire, especially if you've never been before, how to scrub OR etiquette, um, just so that you are prepared. Of course, be familiar with the program that you're going to. You want to be familiar with people's names, faces, um, just general requirements of the program, things like that. Um, it's also important to prepare ahead for the cases you are going to see. And things you can do is study the general steps in a procedure, the indications for a procedure, the risks involved with the procedure. But I honestly think this is secondary to studying anatomy and studying pathology. Obviously, you want to prepare ahead if possible. But the questions that we ask the externs, like we don't expect you to know all the steps of orthognathic surgery, but we do expect you to know relevant anatomy. And then lastly, something that catches a lot of externs off guard, it caught me off guard in my first externship, is an interview with the program director or the chair of the program, one or the other. And this is something that is very common, and this is something that you definitely want to be prepared for. So what to bring? So you want to pack a suit with appropriate dress shoes. I think more often than not, you're never going to use it. You're never going to put it on, but if you come to a program like ours that requires you to have formal attire, you definitely don't want to be the person in jeans in clinic. Um, you also want to make sure you have shoes appropriate for the OR. I would bring a pair of scrubs with you. Likely, you again, you're not going to touch them. However, for me, one of my externships, I brought a pair of scrubs and the first day for me, we left the city, we went to some private practice that one of the attending surgeons ran and I was there assisting them all day and I had to be in scrubs. And I obviously was not given scrubs there or beforehand, so it was super awesome that I thought of packing a pair. Um, I would also bring a pen light, a pocket notebook with pen to just jot, at, jot down any notes and then tongue depressors are sometimes helpful if you are on rounds with like an intern or one of the other residents. Um, and those can be obtained at the hospital um, prior to rounds. So some pearls I have on being a great extern. Um, some of these are common sense, but I do want to mention them because they are relevant. Um, for sure, eat a good breakfast and consider compression socks. I think a lot of externs don't realize you might not get a lunch, you might not get a dinner, you might be really busy. Um, a lot of externs report a lot of foot pain, and this is definitely something that you do not want to deal with. You don't want to be the person sitting out of surgery because your feet hurt a lot, or um, you feel lightheaded because you haven't eaten for a while. So make sure you do these things. Um, you want to stay engaged, you want to ask questions, but please don't overdo it. And one tip I have for you is ask questions that a resident can answer, preferably a question that a junior resident can answer, because typically if you ask a question, especially in the OR setting, the senior resident or the a attending surgeon will punt the question to a junior resident, and you definitely don't want to make the resident feel bad or look bad. Um, so that's just a tip. Uh, you always want to be on time. If needed, just Go to the hospital a day early to get the lay of the land or go to clinic a day early to go look to see at least where you'll be working so that you get there on time. And this is crucial, guys, because you don't want to be the extern that's a couple minutes late and you might think, well, what's the big deal? It's only a couple minutes. But if you're a couple minutes late, then maybe the intern is a couple minutes late now because they were waiting for you. And now suddenly the OR isn't prepped, the patient isn't consented and site marked, and anesthesia goes to another department to start a case and suddenly the whole OR is behind by half an hour now to an hour just because of a couple minutes of an extra being late. So it's a domino effect, it truly is. So make sure you are always on time. So this seems like common sense, but it is not for some people. You do not want to take any photographs while you are there on an externship. So there's patient information everywhere um, and 
Oftentimes it is not allowed even if you get rid of the patient information. But if people know your location and the date and time when certain photos were taken, it still violates certain HIPAA regulations and whatnot. So just keep your cell phone put away. And there's a general rule to not take a photograph of anything while you are at your externship just to be safe. You always want to wait to be excused to go home for the night or to go eat lunch or to take a break or at least tell somebody that you are leaving if you absolutely have to go. Um, the worst scenario is when you're working in an OR or at the clinic or whatever and then you look up and the extern is mysteriously gone. So make sure that is not you. When offered to take call, always take a call. So for me as an extern, I basically offered to take call, but I was very specific on the days. Like I would do three out of the five days. I would say, yes, I'll take call because I thought that taking call meant that I was at the hospital awake all night long for five plus days straight. And honestly, that's not the case in very many programs. In fact, many residents are not even going to call you unless it's something important for you to see because they do not want to wake you up or have to wait for you um, if it's not anything that's clinically relevant for you to see. So just say you're going to take call all the days that you are there um, and that will help you in the long run. Um, so this next point, also kind of obvious, but you don't want to question the treatment plan that a resident makes or an attending makes. Um, in front of patients. If you have questions about the treatment plan, that's totally fine. Just ask it when you're away from the patient. Um, keep your phone put away. We discussed that already. And then just be mindful of all the people in the room, like in the OR environment. Make sure you're not in somebody's spot. Make sure you're not blocking somebody's view. Make sure you're not pushing residents out of the way. Just, just be nice. And then never talk badly about another program or a resident or a student. Basically, even if the attendings or the residents or the patients or the nurses or whoever are actively talking and you think you want to contribute to the situation or the conversation, just don't. You want to attend all conferences. Um, I think every program expects you to attend all conferences unless they tell you so. In advance to not attend, I would just plan on going to every conference that's offered during the week that you are there. And then lastly, ask how you can help. Um, very simple thing to do and oftentimes yields the most benefits. So that is it guys. Um, I hope this presentation was helpful. If you have other questions or would like me to make another video on some other subject, just comment down below. Thank you.